community. Host community. Our community. Host community. Our community. Come on, give me another chance. Uh, Trickle down upon 
approach to housing only serves to displace residents and small businesses, overscale our neighborhoods, strain our underfunded public infrastructure, and take away our sunlight. Right. It renders our communities unaffordable and alters the places that we call home in ways that make them unrecognizable. Enough is a fucking enough. No, that's not in the declaration. That's my... An amendment. It's an amendment to the declaration. Yeah, amendment. <laughs> Reject the housing policy that is based on enormous giveaways to luxury real estate developers in exchange for a small percentage of dubiously named affordable housing. Stop the use of affordable as a safe word to justify towerizations or as a substitute of real multi-generational affordability for low-income people. Reinvent the rigged land use process. I'm going to say that again. Reinvent the rigged land use process to allow for legitimate, legitimate community-led planning instead of imposing done deals, developments. No land use review process should be allowed to you virtual. No virtual meetings such as Zoom as a substitute for public hearings. That's some bullshit right there. I agree with you. Bullshit. And the reckless conversion of still of the still useful manufacturing space into gentrified housing. I tell you, stop the bullshit. Stop the rezoning. Stop the fucking rezonings. Put a moratorium on all rezonings until they can come up with a policy and procedure that truly reflects our wishes, the community's wishes. Over 60 community organizations have signed this declaration. I will not name all of them for you because we will take another couple of minutes. But I want you to say we are thankful for you to be here. And now I'm going to hand it over to our MC who will be handling the rest of this program. <laughs>
predatory rezonings are making a call to action to save our city and to stop these racist rezonings. Woo! Today we have 11 great speakers with us and to open it up is the amazing Sane Bayan. Thank you. I'm Sunay Biara. I'm the lead housing organizer at Minkwan Center located in Flushing. We've been serving Flushing community for 36 years. In the middle of our battle in, in Flushing, I called for the citywide groups to come together to unite our efforts in challenging this systemic and racist rezoning. Many neighborhoods responded to my calls because we have we know the same patterns of racist rezoning have ruined our communities. We witnessed the increased pace of gentrification, the shutting down of long-time small businesses, and the astronomical increase in rent. The concerns of our community should be of utmost importance in any development plan since we are most directly impacted by these plans. The Flushing community was organized and fought bravely against the special Flushing Waterfront District rezoning. This rezoning plan is not community driven, but for the developer, by the developer. Despite the serious flaws in the application, such as having no environmental impact study. Outrageous, outrageous. 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 Department of City Planning still gave the negative, negative declaration. The council voted to approve the plan despite the mayor's error. In fact, new love is unstoppable once it starts, no matter how destructive the plan is. Community organizations and individuals in Flushing therefore sued the mayor, mayor's agencies for cutting environmental review in the application. This luxury development throughout the city have been nothing but a giveaway to the developers. Developers are granted the special permits, tax benefits, and setback regulations at the expense of our community. Flushing communities have been bearing the burden of environmental racism and are suffering from the displacement due to the, this predatory development. Enough is enough. enough. Enough is enough. We should not have to suffer at the whims of greedy developers. Lastly, we have been muted. While residents continue to grieve and suffer through the pandemic, the city finds it appropriate to force this luxury development upon the community and to resume the approval process. Participating in virtual hearing during the crisis is simply out of reach for many low-income, limited English proficiency senior residents right. and working class families, and only serves to further destroying, muting the community's voice. We should stop all virtual hearings. Yes. 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 Hearings should happen in the neighborhood, in person, and should be accessible to immigrants and to all the working class, working class people. Thank Woo! you. Give it up. Woo! Woo! And we won't be muted. Next, next to the mic is Emily Sharp from Stock Sunnyside Yards. Hey, everybody. Um, so, yeah, Sunnyside Yards right now is on hold, but there are other bad things happening right now. There is a huge, well, first of all, let me step back and say, I didn't have any heat last night. I didn't have any heat this morning. And I was thinking, we called the landlord and we say, hey, we don't have any heat. And they said, is it working? Yeah, it's working. I was like, really? Because it doesn't feel like it's working. And you picked the coldest, one of the coldest days of the year to give us no heat. And I was thinking, how many people right now are without heat in public housing, yes. in private housing, yes. being abused by our landlords left and right, even like this is nothing cold. You know, there, there's so many worse things happening. And I was thinking like, who are the stewards of our housing? Like what, what is our city council and our mayor doing? They're giving our housing, like they're, they're handing over in our handy <laughs> stewardship of housing to bad developers and bad people. That doesn't make any sense. Why are they doing that? Um, and especially for black around people, low income people, people, elderly people. So that's wrong. And I was thinking, Jamani Williams made a big deal yesterday about the worst landlords, the hundred worst landlords. But what are they doing about it? Nothing. They're just talking about it. And where is he? Is he here? I don't see him here. Yeah, exactly. So it's a bunch of crap. And so uh, they're doing nothing. 
Exactly. So here's some things they could. Right. Exactly. So some things they could do is stop giving our land away for a dollar. That would be good. They could all our public land. Another thing they could do is stop these racist rezonings. Just stop doing it. Um, so in Sunnyside, we have um, Adam Weinstein, one of the worst landlords for evicting people in the city, that wants to rezone a manufacturing space that could be used for good paying blue collar jobs for economic empowerment and to help people. But he wants to change it into another residential building. And he's terrible. He is changing rent stabilized housing in the city. And Lynn Mitchell Lama at Kipps Bay is turning into market rate apartments right now in the Bronx at Lambert Houses. He's changing a, he's a demolishing with city approval, demolishing a whole complex, 800 people, black and brown mostly, he's demolishing it. It's affordable housing. He's going to put up high rises to bring in more white and wealthy people. So right. it's wrong. Um, so that's what he's doing. So this is the man who wants to come into our neighborhood. And the community board says, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's, let's, let's look the other way and let him come in and change this manufacturing space to residential. They say it's going to be 100% affordable, but the people will not be able to, the people come in there will not, um, it's, it's too much for even people making minimum wage. It's like 48000 and we know $30,000 $30, is minimum wage, so they can't even do it. Anyway, so we're here to say no. We're here to say, Jimmy Dunn Bramer, you're a council person. You're the only person that can say no. And we're asking you today to say no to this racist rezoning. Say no to Phipps Houses. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Next we have Jack Ricabano from Voices of Gowanus. Let's go, Jack. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jack Ricabono. I'm from the Voice of Gowanus, which is a coalition of community groups and concerned citizens that have been fighting for the Gowanus community and against Mayor de Blasio's biggest rezoning of his administration. We're talking about a rezoning proposal twice the size of Hudson Yards, okay? They want to blanket our neighborhood with 22 to 34 story luxury apartment towers. And we're saying enough is enough. And I want to say it's a beautiful thing to be here today with these communities from across the city. We were with our neighbors in fighting the Industry City project in the Sunset Park area. And we, I was on the steps of City Hall just a couple months ago speaking out against that project. And we need to join together and really fight as a group because that's where we're going to get community power. And I want to just say that Mayor de Blasio and our council member Brad Lander have been pushing for this development for a very long time and ignoring the health and safety issues. Now, common sense would tell you it's not a good idea to bring 20,000 new people into a FEMA flood zone A that flooded during Sandy and have them live around a EPA designated Superfund site the Gowanus Canal, which is one of the most polluted waterways in the country. And Mayor de Blasio will tell you, oh, well, they've been cleaning that up for 10 years. The EPA just started dredging last month, and it's going to go on for at least another 10 years. And, 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 and our council member, Brad Lander, who's been there for 11 years, was against that designation to begin with. It took community power to get that area designated a Superfund site so that we could fight the environmental injustices in that area. Now, in our community, there are 10,000 NYCHA residents, okay? And our, our council member, Brad Lander, over the 11 years that he's been representing the area, he has delivered nothing when it comes to infrastructure for our NYCHA neighbors. And when it came to this massive luxury upzoning, he cut them out of the map. Okay, Mayor de Blasio and Council Member Lander, they're not even in the rezone map. Two blocks away from 30 story luxury towers are our 10,000 NYCHA community members, and they deserved a seat at the table, and they didn't get one. They didn't get one. They demanded that the Department of City Planning release the environmental impact statement before certifying, and they refused to do so. They're planning to release it on January 19th and certify it right away. What's in there? What are they trying to hide? Well, I'll tell you, they're trying to sell this entire upzoning 
on affordable housing complex that they want to build on one of the most toxic sites in New York City and probably New York State, a city-owned site called Public Place. Now, on this site, there used to be a manufactured gas plant. And let me tell you, that is some of the most toxic industrial waste that you can have. And it has seeped over 100 feet deep into the soil, okay? And just on December 1st, the EPA's head engineer for the, for the Gowanus Superfund validated the community's concerns by saying the remediation efforts underway are not sufficient. Brad Lander and Mayor de Blasio want to put a school and an affordable housing complex on poisonous, toxic land. And if that's not social injustice, I don't know what is. So please join us in fighting this rezoning asking hard questions and, and exposing that this process is totally broken and we must remake it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jack. Next we have Danelli Rodriguez from Justice For All. He's gonna be talking about keeping nature public. Yo, yo, what's good, y'all? Hey. It's cold out here, but we about to turn this up. What up? Yeah. Let's go. Who's city? Our city. Who's city? Our city. Who's city? Our city. You damn right it's our city. Woo. But these politicians seem to forget that every time they in the real estate bag. But we cutting that. My name is Don Lee Rodriguez. I'm with the Justice for All Coalition and the DSA, and we stand in solidarity with our neighbors in Flushing against the Flushing rezoning and every single rezoning in New York City. We also stand against the rubber stamping Euler process that prioritizes the real estate lobby and at the cost of our communities. It's over for that. Here are the facts. The zoning policies in New York City historically have been racist and classist. Yeah, that's, right. that's just that's the right. facts. That's, right. that's just right. the facts. That's it. it is a tool for justifying our neighborhoods time and time and time and time and time again. Yeah. And I'm tired of it. I'm from Astoria. They like to say they build new buildings and it, it brings the rent down, but I I've been living in Astoria LIC my entire damn life, and the only things going up are buildings and the rent. Yeah. Yeah. So that's bullshit, part of my friends. It's absolute bullshit. bullshit. Big facts. They let the wrong hood dude into law school, yo. Straight up. politicians should be ashamed of themselves amidst a global pandemic they're over here trying to upzone our cities to justify our people for the real estate lobby when we're in the midst of the largest eviction crisis in our damn history Woo! they want to build more houses that we can't afford when people are going to be living in the damn streets of homelessness because we're literally standing at the home of Occupy City Hall where we built an autonomous zone right here, right here on this land to defund the police, to fund housing. But they evicted us from here too. That's what they seem to love to do, evict our people and bring in the wealthy. Are we going to stand for that anymore? Hell no. Are we going to stand no. for that anymore? Hell no. I don't hear y'all. They need to hear y'all over there. They need to hear y'all in town. They need to hear y'all in Brooklyn. They need to hear y'all in Harlem. They need to hear y'all. Are we going to stand for that anymore? Hell no. Absolutely not. They love spewing this capitalist, neoliberal nonsense that they need to access private funding so that they can build. 
But that's BS. What they need to do is tax the damn rich. What they need to do is tax the damn rich. Tax them. Tax the rich, fund public housing, build more public housing for the people, not for the damn real estate lobby. Let's go. Let's go. Straight up. Thank you, Queen. Straight up. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Straight up. They need to cancel the damn rent. I've been rent striking this whole damn pandemic. Yeah. Being harassed by my landlord time and time again, talking about she can't pay her bills when she's driving a Benz. And she got a couple properties. Sell your bends. Yeah. Sell your buildings. Sell your Give it to the tenants. <laughs> Straight up. Now enough about the the problems. We gonna talk about the solutions now. Woo! The solution is number one: abolish this ULERP, y'all. What we need yeah! is a land use process that centers the communities in which the zoning is going to impact. And I'm not talking about that input crap that they like to talk about. We tired of giving input. We've been giving input for years, time and time again, and they've ignored us each and every damn time. What we need is autonomy and decision-making power in a land use process. If the community says no, it means no. Pack up your bags and go home. That's what we need. And in addition to that, like I said earlier, we need to tax the damn rich and fund public housing. Now, they talking about the blueprint now. They talking about the blueprint now. They trying to mask a privatization through a public trust, but we don't trust that public trust. It's a sham. Get it, y'all. 2021 is around the corner. And I don't really give a rat, you know what, if you a black politician or a brown politician, because there's several of y'all that voted for the flush and rezoning. And I'm going to drop some names right now. Hold on, y'all. Just a name. Just a name. Just a name. Current council members who voted for the rezoning identify as progressive and are seeking office in 2021. Get your pens, papers, phones, tablets ready. One, Carlina Rivera. Two, Diana Ayala. Three, Farrah Lewis. Four, Francisco Moya. Five, Justin Brandon. Five, Kalos. I don't know his last name. Ben Kalos. Yeah, I remember Ben. He be like it. He likes coming to NYCHA and pandering. Keith Powers. Mark Levine. Reynoso in Brooklyn. And Vanessa Gibson. Fuck Gibson. 2021 is around the corner. Oh, yeah. You can't say Black Lives Matter and then be voting for gentrification policies that remove black Hell lives. Up. I'm Hell sorry, up. it's Hell over for Hell that. Up. You can't say the lives of poor people matter when you're taking that real estate bag and voting for gentrifying zoning policies. It's over for that. That's right. Straight up. So what we need to do is tax the rich. What we need to do is defund, disarm, and abolish the police and fund in the conditions of poverty that lead to criminality in our neighborhoods. 
That's what we need to do. Public safety means a guaranteed home. Public safety means guaranteed health care. Public safety means guaranteed education. I bet you my damn life if we focus on those things, you will not see the criminality in our neighborhoods. It will be in the margins. And we won't need all these police officers. Fund the people now. What do we want? 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 When do we want it now? What do we want? When do we want it now? If we don't get it, shut it down. If we don't get it, shut it down. If we don't get it, shut it down. Power to the people, y'all. Let's go. neighborhood to justify his racist rezoning in other neighborhoods. Yes, yes. Okay, Soho is 85% white. Fine. So he's going to say, okay, we'll be fair. I'm sure I'm a fair guy. We're going to upzone Soho. So we'll get to the landmarking part about Soho later on. But the fact is, there's a loophole in this, in this proposal of his that developers can pay into a fund for affordable housing and it will never be built That's in Soho. Right. Right. You know where they're going to be built? Yeah. In the neighborhoods where we don't want them to be built. Exactly. So, exactly. Right. if they're built at all, that's, yeah. there is no guarantee, so it's completely bullshit what he's saying. Yeah. Um, and I want to talk about, you know, when the tourists come over the Brooklyn Bridge there, they don't come to look at that ugly modern skyscraper. They come to see that landmark building, that landmark building, Tweet Courthouse, and the City Hall, 200-year-old landmark building. In, in 1965, the Landmarks Preservation Cre uh, Commission was created. It was started because of the works of Jacqueline Kennedy and the, and the godmother of community activist, Jane Jacobs. Never in 55 years of the 150 historic districts throughout this city has a historic district been upzoned. They want to upzone Soho and Noho. If they get away with that, all our beautiful historic buildings in the five boroughs, not only uh, architectural history, but cultural history. We have Charlie Mingus's house in the East Village, landmark. We have Weeksville in Brooklyn. They will landmark the whole city away, uh, excuse me, do away with 50 years of landmarking so that Bill de Blasio can satisfy his campaign donors. Oh. And, oh. Yeah, that's what it's all about, we know oh. that. Oh. So he wants to upzone Soho and give billions of dollars of an increased Florida FAR building heights for free. They will be able to build 12-story buildings and not give anything back to the community in return. So I'm going to conclude, and I just want to say again, this Zoom meeting, this is a public meeting. You don't have a public meeting in the cloud. Zoom meeting is baloney. So we have to do away with that. And thank you very much. Just a quick announcement, Bodega has, uh, um, has supplied us with some hot meals. They're right in the back, so if anybody's interested, make your way on over to the back. Um, I'm also hearing that we're cutting short on time, so speakers, we know that there's so much going on, but if you could limit your speech to about three minutes, we want to make sure we hear from everyone. Next up to the mic, we have Michael Hollinsworth from Crown Heights Tenants Woo! Union. All right, let's go, Michael. Woo uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right, what's up? I'll try to be quick, but I can't promise. Um, so, I'm, uh, so again, I'm Michael Hollingsworth. I'm out here today representing Central Brooklyn. I'm speaking on the behalf of a couple of groups. I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of a couple of groups. The Crown Heights Tenant Union. Woo! The Movement to Protect the People. Woo! And the Flower Lovers Against Corruption. Woo! Our neighborhood, like a lot of your neighborhoods, are currently under siege by racist rezonings. 
Right now, we're looking at a rezoning at a site called 960 Franklin Avenue, which if it is built, it'll be the largest residential complex in Brooklyn. We're looking at eight to 11 buildings in a one block area. Woo! Uh... The tallest, which will be 39 stories. And not only will this continue the displacement of black people, but it will also destroy the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens. Woo! 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 Public gardens! That's right, they belong to us. This project, like every other racist rezoning project, we are standing here today to say no more. No more! No, no, no more displacing of our neighbors. No more unaffordable housing masquerading as affordable. Woo! No more developer driven rezonings. No! And your time is up. Your time is up. That's what we're saying to the electives who have been in office for seven years. Vote them out. Now I want to talk about seven, right? Seven years. We're gonna play a little game here, right? I want every, I want everybody, I want everybody in this crowd to imagine that you own a car. If you don't own a car, just replace it with something else you you value, right? So imagine you have an employee, and seven times in a row that employee has come to you and said, "Hey boss, let me borrow your keys," and you let them borrow your car, and seven times. They came back to you and said, hey boss, I crashed your car. I drove it into the ditch. When they come to you on that eighth time, what are you going to say? No, 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 no. Fuck you. Right. I mean, you, you, you probably should have wised up before the seventh time, but you know, and that's the situation we find ourselves now. Yes. This city council and this mayor has one year left. Woo! Right? They're looking for, this is their eighth year in office. Third, third right. And my, my position, and I think your position, should be we don't trust you. You have, you have failed us for seven years. You don't get in your eighth year to pass some of the largest and worst developments this city has ever seen. That needs to be our collective demand. We need to tell them to stand down. No more rezonings in your last year. Collect your paycheck and then get the F out of office. But this is the last thing I want to say to folks. There is a chance to do things differently. Over the course of the next six months, we'll, as a city, we will be able to transform our city government. If you, like me, have hated the rezonings and the land use decisions of the past eight years, now is your time to step up. In every district in this city, there's a city council election coming up next year. That's right. This is, this is your job if you choose to accept it. That's right. And a couple of, a couple of uh, special elections too. But this is your job if you choose to accept it. Look in your district and find the fighters who have been fighting with you on the ground yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yeah. That's right. Right. Because there's one thing I can guarantee you. Big real estate has already picked out their candidates in each race. So your job is to find, that's right, your job is to find the fighter in your community who's been standing with you. You find, you find that fighter. You support them. You donate. You donate money, you donate time, you uplift them, you keep their spirit high, and you support them next June. Because that's the only way we're going to change this city. That's right. Woo! No more racist rezoning. Thank you. And if anybody, and one last thing, if anybody wants to fight, wants to join the fight against, if anybody wants to join the fight against 960 Franklin Avenue, which will destroy Brooklyn Botanic Garden, which belongs to this entire city. Reach out, 
reach out to mtop.org and sign up to the mailing list and join this fight. Thank you all. Thank you. Inviting us here today, and I want to thank. Uh, I see one of our supporters out here in the cold, Christopher Morte. So thank you for being here. I'm here today representing the Seaport Coalition. We have a very small lot within our historic district that they have tried eight, nine times to build on, each time being rejected. The last time they was accepted, but they refused to build as of right. They finally found an angle, and that angle is the lie of affordable housing. But, oh, not affordable. The lie of affordable housing, super tall buildings create lock boxes in the sky for the ultra wealthy and foreign nationals who will never be a part of our community. These towers lie mostly empty, unable to attract buyers. A race for the sky ensues to build more and taller condos, all at the expense of the local community. They drive up rents in the surrounding areas, create food deserts with unaffordable markets, destroy the fabric of the neighborhood, and disproportionately hurt lower income and communities of color, all under the political cover for our elected by offering some affordable, affordable housing. housing. Say it. Affordable, affordable housing. housing. Thank you. Thank you. It is a scam. It is a scam. That's it's right. Scam. It's a law. It's a fucking law. All the time. That result in nothing but below market rate housing that is neither permanent nor affordable. Right. That's right. That the governor, mayor, borough president, LPC, and city council would even consider breaking a long standing and hard fought zoning of 120 feet at the birthplace of New York City, the South Street Seaport, to allow for two twin 475 foot tall towers to be built on a contaminated lot. Boo! Next to two elementary schools Boo! in a floodplain that was underwater during Sandy Boo! and has to date no funded re resiliency plan in place is unconscionable. Bad, bad, bad. Why the rush? The Landmarks and Preservation Committee has said no eight times already to projects that were even smaller in scale. It's time to stop allowing mega developers to destroy our communities to simply line their own pockets. We stand together today with our allies here to oppose the tyranny of the real estate lobby, taking public property for private use. Say Help no us protect our Rodney. seaport. Say Say no. 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 Thank you, Stacy, and next let's welcome Jorge Muniz from Sunset Park. What's up, y'all? My name is, is Jorge Muñiz, soy un mexicano, nacido in Brooklyn. Um, I'm coming to uh, rub in my neighborhood, Sunset Park, and a very powerful group of my neighbors, uh, organized under, under the name Protect Sunset Park, that have come together. Woo! Come together in this year with, with friends, with family, with neighbors. Uh, and, and we came together because we, we got some enemies, y'all. I don't know if you know this, Woo! but we got, we got some enemies that are, that are trying to replace us right now. And they, they use a lot of fancy ner terms when they do it, but you know, I'm Mexican. I see land theft when I when I see it and I call it what it is. Woo! That's right. They're trying to take our land and we got a lot of experience where I come from in my neighborhood about white people coming in and trying to take our land. Woo! And and so we had some some wisdom that we learned for over years when a group of billionaires decided to show up after a disaster, after Hurricane Sandy, and said, Oh, look at these buildings. There's nothing here. It's vacant. And we can do we can we can don't worry, y'all, we can develop it for you. And they 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 lined up with their money, a group of politicians, a group of nonprofits, a group of people, they use a lot of names. Sometimes they even call themselves progressives and liberals. Yeah. And they lined up and they said a lot of pretty names, like resilience, yeah. like affordable housing, yeah. like yes. economic development. Yes. What was it really? It was about replacing black and brown people they couldn't profit from so they could sell something to investors they never even bother set foot in Sunset Park. And so, and so let me just tell you what we did, y'all. 
because we had everybody against us. We had our council member, Carlos Menchaca, who right now thinks he can run for mayor. We had the, every single nonprofit in the neighborhood was too scared to even speak up. But what we said is, nah, we had a group just like this. We got together right in front of the council member's office and we said, we're not gonna let him take our land. We're not gonna let him use it for a big luxury mall. We're gonna keep it because we got ideas ourselves that we've been making for years. It's just that the people behind us over here who say that they're working at City Hall, who are probably at their houses right now, right? They just have never bothered to listen, y'all. They've never even bothered to listen because we've got a bit, had big ideas for a long time. And in Sunset Park, let me just tell you this, we're gonna make that neighborhood, we're gonna create the, the working waterfront, the manufacturing that we need to confront a sick, a sick capitalist culture that is breaking down before our eyes right now. And y'all can see it, y'all can see it. I'm gonna just say, how many of y'all are unemployed right now, right? How many of y'all know that you, yeah, they know someone that's unemployed right now? Right? How many of y'all see the system breaking down before y'all right now? We see it. The change is coming, but it's not going to happen unless we ask for it and demand it because the politicians are not going to do it. The nonprofits are not going to do it. It's only us uniting that are going to do it. And so I'm here saying Sunset Park is here to fight for y'all. I know y'all are here for, to fight for us. We're going to fight for Flushing, for Soho, for Harlem, every working class neighborhood. So that's what we're going to do, y'all, and we're going to demand Mayor de Blasio and City Council Speaker Corey Johnson stop the racist rezoning. Yes. Stop the rezoning! Rezone de Blasio's block. We're going to stop them, y'all, and and so I'm here with y'all. I'm here to fight, and we got a few more speakers up, uh, so I'm going I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a stop right this at po this point, and, and that's when I introduce the next one. Thank you. known as uh, Innovation Queens um, with a certain Cell, along with Evie who is next to me uh, and then this is like the plan um, who has been to Astoria many of you yes. and then you know that Astoria is a very vibrant cultural community when you walk on Stanway one of the main streets a long street you're gonna hear people speak Portuguese, Arabic, Greek, Bangla, Hindi, Croatian, Spanish. This community is comprised of Storia. And I mentioned these communities because when we talk about mega developments coming into a neighborhood that are being proposed by billionaires such as like Larry Silverstein, who is worth, who is worth four billion dollars. Yes, tax the fucking rich. And they shouldn't sit, exist. Um, when we talk about these communities, these are the communities that will be this place. Bullshit with a two, hundred, I mean, 700 uh, affordable unit. They're not meant for them. They're Come not on. meant for our communities who are working class, immigrant. black, immigrant, brown. They're the first ones to be displaced, to be pushed out while they're promising all this affordable housing. They don't need, not only do they live there, but over years, over decades, they have able to build capital. They are the owners of restaurants, bars, jewelry stores, hardware stores. And yet they're gonna be this place because they're promising high rent, uh, high end retail, a world market, office space, office space for who, right? When you walk on Stanway, 
between Astoria Boulevard and 35th Avenue, that's seven blocks, you'll find about 50 empty storefronts already. And there are more to shut down, more to close out, right? Because our government at every level, city, state, and federal, have abandoned small businesses. Woo! Yes. And I can't wrap my head around the fact that if this development goes through EULA process and if the city council approves this development, a two billion development, they're gonna these developers are gonna get a massive tax break. Oh yeah. While we have hundreds of people lined up five hours to get a food pantry bag. While they're applying for any cash assistance to pay the rent arrears. We have many tenants, many neighbors in Astoria that owe more than $10,000 in just rent arrears. And yet the government is turning the back on them. And then they want to build this de mega development, not just in Astoria, but across the city. So when we say that we want to put a stop into all this racist rezoning, we mean it. That's right, that's right. And then this is why we're here, right? It's cold, it's damn fucking cold. But we know that if we don't, if we don't stand up, no one will for us. Woo! And then yesterday, and I'm glad, Donnelly, that you mentioned all those city members, city council members yes. that voted for the flushing rezoning. Uh, oh. Now, Routlander, Reynoso, Carlina, City Speaker Johnson. Ooh. They're proposing a new zoning plan. I want to ask all of you, all of you who are fighting against a, a, a rezoning, a mega development, have you been called to sit at the table? No. 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 And I, I hope that they will listen to this. And I have questions for you. Because it doesn't seem that they have reached out to us and asked us, like, what is best for our community? What does our community need? And I wonder, and I'm, uh, and I'm asking if you have read our community declaration for the future of New York City. Because if you, not, if you did not, then that new zoning plan is Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. It's worthless. Yeah. Because there's no community input. Speak on it. And then, not because I just want to have a sit on the table, but we represent many voices who are voiceless. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. And then we're oh. sick of this Euler process that only benefits those big developers. It's all a lie. It's all a scam. Yes, it is. Who said it? Our city. Who said it? Our city. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Adele. Next, we have Andrea Coloma from Homes Isaacs Coalition. We keep us safe. Let's try it again. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. Y'all better start showing up at some protests for real. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Learn the language. So greetings. I am Sandra I. Coleman. I am one of the co-founders of the Holmes Isaacs Coalition. Woo! We are tenant organizers and activists. 
I am also one of the organizers at UES for BLM. That's the Upper East Side for Black Lives Matter, which, which we are embarking on our 200th consecutive day of protests on this Friday. Come through, come through. Rezoning and NYCHA infill projects are nothing but land grabs. Yes, land grabs that do not benefit all people are bad. Systemic racism is real and active in New York City. Talk about it. Remember Seneca Village? Yeah. How prospering, prospering people, many black, were pushed out to create Central Park? The city huh? used intimate domain, a legal land grab. So that That's is a right. problem. We have been fighting against privatization in Holmes Towers before the summer of 2015. Yes, our boots have been on the ground. We were told the best way to receive our repairs in our homes was the infill proposal that was slated at Holmes Towers. Public-private partnerships are absolutely no good when it comes to public housing. Yep. Talk about it. The only one that truly benefits is the private developer and the corrupt mayor and other politicians that are beholden to them because they donate money to their campaigns. Let's be real. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be real about it. Rezoning as well as forms of privatization at NYCHA developments are nothing, like I said, but legal gra lab, land grabs. And we the people must push back. We the people must resist. And we the people must fight to continue to inform your neighbors and show up and speak out at your local community board meetings too. Y'all have to be there. Y'all have to be lined up. When these developers show up and they want to give their proposal, you all need to be in the room. These meetings are conducted via Zoom, so y'all can be in the room and, and take over the meeting. Just sign up on time and speak. They give you two minutes, y'all need to show up. If y'all about if y'all out here, y'all could be in the comforts of your home, still letting them know how y'all feel and push back. Because with the community board, if the people, if they vote with y'all, your city council member will vote with the people. I am a community board member. So be lined up like I said. So those rezoning proposals and privatization plans within NYCHA, we just have to stop them as the people. So yeah. remain encouraged yeah. and empowered. We the people shall not be stopped. We must see that qualified immunity is abolished. We are stuck with bad actors and city government. I was I was on the city uh, the public advocates uh, rollout yesterday about the world's, you know, the city's worst landlords, right? So they always hold accountable these private landlords. But the mayor is not held accountable. We at hold Holmes and Isaacs, we sued the city on December 13th Woo! of last year. So we are going in, we are in a year in our process. So, but not, what happens? They're not held accountable, but if we abolish qualified immunity, we can, we could go after them and sue them. So remember to vote, and every 10 years, complete your census, and mostly hold your elected officials accountable. Yeah. They work for you, not the other way around. Let's, let's keep it real. Hold them accountable. They are not beholden to the people that donate to their campaigns like the rich. They're beholden to the citizens that they are in charge to represent, and if they are not representing you, vote them out. The mayor, out. This current mayor, what he's done, and in these last two terms, he has committed political suicide. He's not going anywhere else. And we're going to make sure he does it because we're going to follow him wherever he try to run, right? He tried for president a little bit, right? We're going to make sure he's never elected anywhere. This is the end of his political career. Thank you. Right. We're about, awesome. we're about close to time. We have one last dynamic speaker, and then we're going to open up for a quick open mic just because we have some community members, some folks who want to share some information with you about personal struggles that they have in their communities. So let's give it up for um, the last dynamic speaker that we have on our list before open mic, Zisha Ning from the Chinatown Working Group. Give it up. Chinatown and the Lower East Side, like many other neighborhoods in New York City, have been displaced. Our tenants have been evicted 
small business, small business shut down, workers lose their jobs, and somehow these corrupt politicians and the developers say that this is common sense. But when our community wow. come up with our own protective rezoning, the Chinatown Working Group rezoning plan, to protect the whole neighborhood from displacement, these same politicians and the developers say that we are too ambitious. Uh, so to them, displacement is common sense. Protective rezoning is, is too ambitious. Racism is common sense. Anti-racism is too ambitious. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. And now they have the audacity to say that we don't want change. These are the same people who have been ruling, who have been ruining our community for far too long, who have been calling the shot and denied any change. They are the ones who resist change. We are so sick and tired of their displacement agenda. We are so sick and tired of their racism. And we are sick and tired of you, Mayor de Blasio, you racist gentrifying-in-chief, and all these city council members who support his racist displacement agenda. We call you out, a sellout. It is what it is. You are sellout, no matter what sell color out. you are in. Margaret Chin, for example, our councilwoman. Sell out. Sell out. Sell out. We are the ones who want change. We, the communities, are the ones who want change. A change from the city's displacement agenda. A change to have community's voice really matters. A change to kick out all these big developers from our neighborhood. We the Chinatown and the Lower East Side, we're proud to join every other neighborhood here to demand that our city is not for sale. To demand not for sale. that Chinatown not, not for sale. Low East Side not for sale. Soho no ho not for sale. Crown Heights not for sale. Gowanus not for sale. Inwood not for sale. East Harlem not for sale. Sunset Park not for sale. Flushing not for sale. Jackson Heights not for sale. South Bronx not for sale. New York City not for fucking sale. New York City not for. Roger Manning from MAGIC, the Metro Area Governor's Island Coalition. We were newly formed, although we've been on the issue for years, a lot of us individually. Now we have a group, it's only a month old. We had the highest number of public comment submissions to the CB1 uh, ever happened. They had a, a, a land committee uh, meeting this past week. We had an impact, they actually set, come, they're, negative response to the current rezoning uh, uh, proposal for Governor's Island. Essentially, everything you all said about all these other rezonings is happening with Governor's Island. How many people have been to Governor's Island? Woo! Governor's Island is an island in the New York Harbor that's an irreplaceable green open space, magical place for people to, it's a refuge for New Yorkers, it's essentially a park, and it belongs to everyone here, and, and it's especially accessible for low-income people like myself and a lot of people that I know. We can go out there and they're trying to sell it off. And, and then they're, the, the marketing plan, oh, we're going to put a climate research center out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Anyhow, we've had a dent and we're in solidarity. We've signed on to the letter that was mentioned earlier. We're in solidarity with all the other upzoning struggles. It's Governor's Island, it's the same kind of thing. They're trying to sell out public land, and, and I don't have to explain it. Everybody else can explain how it all works. Magic. We're on all the social media. Please join us. We're joining your struggles as well. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, for open mic, we're going to hear from Jose Guevara. All right, Jose. 
Hola, ¿cómo están? Bien, gracias. Estamos bien. Muy bien. ¿Cómo están? Voy a hablar en inglés, ¿ok? Perdona. Um, during this pandemic of COVID-19, this mayor doesn't change his routine. Here comes another scheme. I think he gets his ideas from movie screens. NYCHA, the next generation. Do you guys remember that? Wasn't that that Star Trek movie? NYCHA 2.0. Wasn't that that sci-fi movie titled 2.0? NYCHA, blueprint for change. Wasn't that that Black Lives Matter movie in 2019, maybe I should do the same and describe the mayor's game. What about using the movie title, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? We could call this new plan, Night Your Cuckoo. What about using the movie title, Psycho? We could call this new plan Psycho Nature. <laughs> what about using the movie title The Titanic? We could call this new plan Nature's Blueprint for the Titanic. Regardless if the name has changed, scheming to trick the public of playgrounds and public land to give it away to developers who donate to co political campaigns is the same game. I don't mean to create a fuss, but Bill de Blasio and Gregory Russ need to be kicked out yeah. on their booties yeah. and given yeah. a job at the movies. Yeah. Thank you. Two more speakers. We have Lena Melendez from Northern Manhattan is not for sale. Hi, everybody. My name is Lena Melendez, and I'm from Northern Manhattan is not for sale. I was born and raised in the Heights. Imagine living a lifetime in a community where no speculators were ever interested in your neighborhood. No economic development dollars, wherever it's designated for your community. And then they decide, decide, decide to rezone you. The first people that are asked to leave are the very people who built this city. Right. Working and middle class folks, people on fixed incomes. Rezonings are racist in nature. Color blind policies that pretend this is not a race issue have gotten us to where we are today. It is well past the time to not only stop it, but reverse it. Rezonings over the last seven years were never about integration and affordability. It was about disposing of the land to build luxury housing. It was about selling our land to the highest bidder. And then they promised the 30% affordable housing units. The mandatory inclusionary housing program, MIH, does not produce housing that is affordable to those in the community. We need a different approach. We have to have a powerful discussion about race and community and money. We need to use CMI, which is community median income, instead of AMIs, which is area median income. We fought against the inward rezoning tooth and nail as other rezoned areas are doing right now. I was naive enough to think that the EULA process actually gave the community a voice. Boy, was I wrong. Wow, was I wrong. We went to every public hearing. We went to every vote. We testified, we marched, we flyed, we raised the awareness of the community. We, we participated in civil disobedience. We got arrested. We occupied this communi the, the community uh, council member's office. We threw block parties. We flyed up and down Dykeman and 207th Street to no avail. Okay, we, we were out and in front of the cameras all the time talking about we didn't want this fucking rezoning. Yeah. And they did it anyway. They did it all for, right over us. They just railroaded us, railroaded us. We went to 
I know now that the Euler is bullshit. It's bullshit. bullshit. It's a, once that once that Euler is announced, it's a wrap. Yeah. The, the yeah, fucking yeah. deals have already been cut. The money has been slid under the table. Okay, it's you know people, ordinary people, working class folks. We need to dismantle the land use system. We need to reimagine it so that it serves the people in the communities that are built in. And we need to get 36 progressive candidates in there. Now, take a look. Take a look. Take a look at who, who donates, how much money they got, all right? And they take a look at how many times they showed up all right, for their community, if they just fucking moved in, all right, they, there's, there's people and in, in running that they're, they're, they're fucking, they're fucking shams. They just want a fucking job. They don't give a shit about the community, all right? You need to really take a look and then show up and vote and fuck, and, and, and donate, donate to those people because people like them, they are not, the system is not geared for them to be in office. We need to support them. All right. Woo, thank you, Lena. All right, everyone, we're at the end. Thank you so much for coming out. New York City is not for sale. Not for sale.